Our next speaker is Dr. Manuel Brunegeli. He is a political scientist and a professor at the University of Victoria in Canada, where he specializes in comparative and urban politics. He directs the Borders in Globalization, which has a great acronym, uh, BIG program, which is a network of academic partners from around the world that work with non-academic organizations involved in the management of borders and borderlands in Canada and worldwide. He is the chief editor of the Journal of Borderland Studies, which is based in Victoria, Canada, and published by Rutledge. Uh, later this year, JBS, the journal, will publish an article by Maria Polner from the WCO's Enforcement Subdirectorate, and you know she's with us this week. Um, the paper is on customs and illegal trade. And later this year, uh, JBS will publish a special issue of papers on informal trade. These are papers that were presented at the WCO Research Conference on informal trade practices. So we're very grateful for that. Emmanuel, welcome to Baku, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's my first PCARD conference ever. I'm very impressed, I'm delighted, and I'm learning every day. I want to thank the Ab Ab uh, Azerbaijan Custom and Kerm Custom and World Custom Organization for inviting me. Um, I will try to um, come again and certainly to bring many of my colleagues. Um, as you were told, I'm the head of a research program that is in 30 countries today. We have 100 professors involved in this research program. There are 30 different teams that study borders around the world. Um, I want to talk to you about Journal of Borderland Studies, and first of all, I would like to um, introduce, so you have some of the information here. It's a Taylor and Francis Rutledge publication. It's a, in a way, uh, the way I look at it, it's an international general academic journal. Um, and I will detail this a little bit. In my mind, this journal is a little bit like a marketplace between uh, different scholars. Um, but I'm delighted, obviously, to present it to you because this is one of the things that we would like to do is to expand not only the readership but also the diversity of uh, people who do research that are not traditional academics and that would like to publish with academics so they can exchange ideas, exchange methodologies, and work together even on producing papers. Now, this journal was created in 1984 by the Association of Borderland Studies. And the Association of Borderland Studies, as I will detail in a few um, minutes, is uh, an academic association. It's made up basically of researchers and pros professors that work in 60 different countries. Today we have about 400 members. Um, the, the association was created in 1976 and originally the focus of the association was to look at the US-Mexico border only. Um, and I do say this and I insist on this because it gr has grown tremendously in terms of m membership and in terms of diversity of scholarship um, over the last 20 years. Um, today it's widely uh, consulted by obviously educators and researchers but also um, by people who are policy makers, decision makers. You have here um, a, a slide that details the evolution of this association. As you can see from 2007 until last year, the representation has increased tremendously from about 100 and something uh, members to um, recently over 400 members with 370 members that are paying members that receive the journal. Um, obviously, the journal is also in 600 libraries, academic libraries around the world, and we also have some banks and so on and so forth. But the reason I put the slide here is to show you 
that it is to be found in many different countries. By the way, we have scholars in these countries, in Baku, that reads it. And you can see that the representation around the world has increased steadily, especially since 2010. You have here also a, a different way of presenting the most recent data, and so you can see that the journal readership is quite vast across members of the Association of Borderland Studies. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about what the journal um, editorial line is. Uh, we publish work from any uh, discipline across all of the social sciences. That includes economics, uh, psychology, political science, public administration, geography, obviously, history, and so on and so forth. But we also publish the work of um, business students, business researchers, um, lawyers, and people who study borders from the perspective of the humanities, people who teach languages, people who research borders from a much more cultural perspective. Um, it's, in other words, as I said when I introduced the journal, it's a journal of general academic readership, and it's a journal that wants to address the question of crossing the boundary line from a conceptual and academic perspective uh, and engage the world on this question, the evolution, the various evolutions um, around this idea that anything that crosses boundary lines, whether they're conceptual or real international treaty ones, for instance, um, would be of an interest to other colleagues. Um, papers that are submitted um, to this journal are submitted to a rigorous peered, blind peered review process. At least two reviewers will read the papers and assess them. In most cases, our average is three reviews per paper, but we go as far as four, five sometimes. Um, and um, uh, the idea that we have to be open-minded open about our understanding of borders goes quite far. The way people understand boundaries and borders or borderlands today or frontiers um, is that it has to do with crossing a boundary line. It has to do with basically an understanding of territory and the fact that some things cross a division between two spaces. And that is the traditional historical way of understanding this. So we have lots of papers that study specific border regions. We have lots of colleagues who do specific case studies and study specific regions in depth. But obviously, as we have internationalized, um, the diversity of regions that are studies has also internationalized greatly. And more and more colleagues are studying this in comparative perspectives. They're starting to work in teams, looking at many different borderlands. And not only do they look at this from a great diversity of borderlands and case studies, but they also look at this from a very um, many diverse ways of questioning borderlands. So traditionally, we would have looked at state-to-state -state relations, and today we're looking at very specific functional issues, such as custom issues, and within custom issues, very specific issues, such as some of the issues that are discussed at some of the panel at this conference, looking at fraud, looking at information asymmetries, looking at immigration issues, looking at ways to measure this much more specifically and much more precisely. Um, so I'm the editor of this journal, and the way the journal is organized is around a team of scholars that are basically uh, continental specialists. We have specialists uh, for the Asian countries, for the African countries, for the European countries, for the North American countries, for the South American countries or Latin American countries, and the Arctic and the Antarctic. 
Um, and we have one scholar who's uh, responsible for all special issues. In other words, issues that subdivide and analyze in depth. I'll give you an example in a few seconds. Um, people who would like to sub-specialize an issue, for instance, with ten, four to 10 research papers on a very specific topic that would have uh, to do with, for instance, uh, maritime boundaries and fisheries. Um, I think Iceland is in the room, and we have never had uh, historians, for instance, looking at the Cod War, but I'm sure these are the kind of things that can be studied in depth and can uh, also, therefore, uh, develop new knowledge of great interest to lots of people. It can, for instance, have a custom uh, angle to it. Uh, we have an international advisory board of scholars, which allows us, therefore, to tap into their own personal networks to review the papers across the varied disciplines, but also the different continents and the different case studies here. Um, and the Association of Borderland Studies, as I was saying, has about 400 members, but the listserv of reviewers for the Journal of Borderland Studies today has almost 1,700 members and reviewers. I think the exact number is something like 1,657 or 58. So when I say that we have blind reviews of the papers, I rely on a team of people around the world that is nearly uh, 1,700. Um, now, how many papers do we see? How many pub papers do we publish? And what kind of themes have we been working on? And then I'll conclude. Um, just to give you an example, when I was to do the um, uh, annual report, I usually present some data. So from January to April of this year, we had 48 papers under review. Basically, the ballpark figure is that we receive 120 papers a year, and we have the ability to publish about half of those. We cannot publish more. We do four numbers per year, and we um, publish and review those papers as timely as we can. Um, we do half of those numbers are either special sections or special issues. Um, here are examples of some of the special sections or special issues that we have been or are working on, such as nature and impact of informal, 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 sorry, informal sector in cross-border regions, smuggling and borders, uh, world custom, uh, cross-border cooperation in security, West Bank wall. You can see that some are very functional and thematic, others are much more specific to specific borders or specific border regions around the world. Um, the way we review the papers um, is that we rely on uh, software which is available on the Routledge um, Taylor and Francis website. And therefore, we know how many days it takes us to review a paper. And we can also quantify the speed at which our colleagues are working. Um, and to illustrate this here, I will say that basically we need 120 days to review a paper. And we're working against that. We're trying to reduce the number of days to review papers faster, to provide comments to uh, people who submit papers. Um, um, in less than 100 days. My, my goal over the next two years is to come down to about 80 days for reviews. And the turnaround time, once we have uh, the reviews, uh, is to publish the paper f uh, uh, very quickly. Um, thank you very much. If you have questions or comments,